I apologize for the the crash before. I just make sure everything's working properly. Um, I, I don't know what happened. I it was, it was how many streams we've done twice a week for for weeks and weeks, and uh, everything was wor worked out well. So I apologize for the delay. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, want to talk about the commencement ceremony, the procedures and guidelines that will. Uh, that we want to follow for our July 1st commencement program. Guidelines continue to come out on a daily basis. In fact, even just today, Pennsylvania Task Force for Reopening Education uh, talked to there's 131 pages of guidelines. Uh, we know the CDC has guidelines out around large group gatherings. We know that the process to reopen Pennsylvania and, and what it means to be a green state or a green county, uh, that all those things have a lot of bearing on what we want to do. We've looked at many options and many alternatives to the commencement ceremony, whether that's a virtual program, small group, individual, um, not having anything at all and mailing out diplomas. And I think that, that school districts around the region, county, state, uh, across America have been wrestling with those, those things. We know we wanted to do something different. We know we, we wanted to try to hold a ceremony and that's what we want to do and, and that's what we plan to do. July 1st is the date. So a lot of the restrictions for the school year expire on June 30th, that's 30th. That's why we wanted to get into July. And so that's that's what our goal is. July 1st, 2020, 7.30 p.m., the, the procession will begin to the stadium. We expect to start the ceremony at eight o'clock. There is a rain date. The rain date is July 2nd. Uh, and of course, we'll be at Baldwin High School Stadium outdoors in the stadium. We have some procedures and guidelines that we, we will follow for that day. I and mean, it's really important that in order to do this ceremony and this program safely and responsibly, we have to follow the guidelines. They may not be convenient. They may not be what we want to do. They may not even fit into the traditions that Baldwin High School has had for a Highlander ceremony. But for this year, for this to happen and for us to be comfortable with what levels of risk that we are going to engage in, this is going to be the standard, and this is what I need folks to follow. So for the students, the senior class will be expected to arrive at the high school between 7 and 7.15 p.m. Parking will be in the south lot, which is the pool lot, where the kids come in on school buses on a normal, normal school day, or in the front lot, which is the security entrance, the, that security vestibule out front. Carpooling will be permitted. Although we are requesting that no more than three students in a car. I know that kind of runs a little contrary to social distancing, um, but we know the parking is going to be a premium. All parking spaces on campus will be restricted with a parking pass. So students will be given a parking pass for the south lot or that front lot. Uh, but we also realize that the students with friends, you know, friends may want to get together and they may want to come together to, to the school. And we respect that, uh, but we want to do that responsibly. We want all the kids to stay in their cars until 7.15. So even though that the lots will open at, at 7, stay in your car at 7.15. Students will then enter the building via the south entrance, which is the pool entrance. Proceed directly to the main gymnasium to line up for the procession. Procession will begin promptly at 7.30. Any student being dropped off in that lot, and then if they're not driving, we understand that that may be the case, uh, they can stand under the pool entrance canopy. We expect it's July, it's gonna be warm, but can stand under the canopy. Social distancing must be practiced. Um, student procession will enter and depart the stadium via the visitor's ramp. So normally we have always entered via that ramp, but we're going to leave after the, after the ceremony from that same ramp, proceeding back to the south parking lot at the end of the ceremony, the students will be expected uh, to, to go back to their cars, uh, return to their cars, and proceed directly off school grounds. We will mail diplomas out that day or the following day. Students will not pick up their diplomas as we normally would do inside the school after the ceremony. So after we uh, come, come from the ceremony back to the parking lot, kids will get back to their cars, and they'll leave and go on to whatever, uh, whatever comes next, but it won't be at Baldwin High School. Students will be required to, to wear a mask while entering and ex exiting the ceremony. When, so when they arrive and they depart their cars, when they line up for the procession, masks must be worn. 
So the district will be providing masks to the students. Uh, we're, we're getting them ordered. Of course, that can be a keepsake as well. I, I know this is the class of masks, um, but we are asking and requiring the mask be worn while entering and exiting the ceremony, while we're while we're in procession, we will be social distancing, uh, physically distancing, but masks are required. We also realize that it's going to be hot, and while seated on the field during the ceremony, uh, the masks will not be required because we'll be able to provide social distancing with uh, some space in between everyone at that time. We also realize that the photograph, while while the students are receiving their their diploma cover. We don't want that with a mask in it as well. So we're going to practice other methods and other safety precautions at that time. Uh, but so while the students are in line to get their diploma cover, and then when they return back to their seats, um, the mask will not be required. It's, it's suggested, of course, but not be required. Parents and spectators, we know this is going to be a uh, this this is challenging, uh, but each graduating student, each household will receive two tickets. We are limiting the spectators uh, for the program. Two tickets will be required to gain admission. I'm sorry, a ticket will be required to gain admission to the campus. Anyone without a ticket will not be able to gain access anywhere on campus. You will be stopped um, at basically the driveway. So uh, there won't be anyone hanging on fences. So access to the stadium or access to the campus will require a ticket, period. Um, so any point during the ceremony without a, without a ticket, you will not be able to access. The, the event will be live streamed. So there is absolutely opportunity to, to watch the event. If you don't have a ticket, it will be live streamed. More information will be coming out in regard to that. Hopefully the live stream is much more successful than I have been today. Uh, six, uh, the spectators will be required to park in the north parking lot, which is a student parking lot. Uh, or there's an adjacent gravel lot. So at the very top of the student lot, there's a gravel lot uh, that was left over after construction. Um, so either of those two lots, there will be ample parking. A specific parking pass will be provided to you with your tickets. The stadium and the parking lot um, will open at 645 only. So do not come hours early as in the past. The lots will only open at 645. The stadium will only open at 645. All cars will enter the, the student parking lot from the North Emblem uh, uh, North Emblem Road entrance required to leave via the Frisch Drive exit after the ceremony. Um, and there will not be any parking on high school property without a parking pass. For spectators that have handicapped uh, ne parking needs, you'll be required to present your Department of Motor Vehicles, your DMV, issued placard along with the school issued parking pass and we'll get you access to the central parking lot close to the top of the ramp i mean to provide for any handicap needs we, we are not any issuing any school issued handicap parking uh, uh uh passes anything that would be issued would be accompanying the department of motor vehicles standard handicap parking placard the walkway, this again for uh, spectators and parents, the walkway directly behind the high school, uh, the basically right outside that athletic overlook, will not, you will not be able to access that. So you will, it will be closed and locked. Our goal is to keep the students in one, one section of the school in parking lot, spectators in a different section. So anyone that's coming onto school grounds, I know we have residents that live nearby, parent, parents that live near, nearby that don't necessarily need to drive, but you won't be able to access from that Jill Drive path coming through the south lot and then walking behind the school. You'll have to access the athletic ramp by walking around the front of the school, entering near just as the cars are coming in through the band lot and then coming down through the central lot and then down the athletic ramp. Um, all spectators will be required to enter and exit the stadium using the athletic ramp or there will be a specific path coming down from that gravel lot. Spectators will be expected to be seated upon arrival and not linger in the concourse areas um, and at the stadium and then remain in their seats until the graduates leave the field at the end of the ceremony. Upon the conclusion of the ceremony, spectators must return directly to their vehicles and depart from the high school campus. The normal congregation in the central parking lot just cannot happen. Uh, that's one of my biggest concerns. That's one of the biggest areas that we that we that we face risks. Um, and so that congregation in the central parking lot will not happen. So we'll leave 
the, the parents will leave via the athletic ramp, come up the ramp, make the right into that parking lot, keep moving and, until they they go up to the student lot and, and take their get back into their cars. If they parked in that gravel lot, you can enter the same way, uh, exit the same way in which you entered, uh, return to your cars. Um, and the way that will be required to park everyone, we do need everyone to return to their cars promptly uh, because otherwise uh, the traffic flow out of the lot just won't be able to happen the way we need it to. The central parking lot will be utilized for faculty and staff parking. So when you have uh, board members, uh, faculty, staff, folks that are making sure that the program can happen, of course, then the handicapped um, access as well. There will be passes for that um, uh, for that lot and additional information will be, pro will be provided to that group. We are asking and uh, having the Baldwin Airs and the Baldwin Band uh, to be participating in our event on July 1st. And so the band parking lot will be utilized for parking and coordination for this particular group. Again, specific parking passes will be provided. Uh, Mr. Tranter and Ms. Virgin will be getting more information out to these children and these parents um, in, in the next couple of days. Um, and so please be on the lookout for, for that information from those folks. Again, specific parking passes, they will be color coded. That information all will be coming out. The place where most of this information will be received is at commencement practice. Commencement practice will be on July 1st from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. So important information will be communicated as well as the distribution of parking passes, the distribution of tickets. All that is going to happen at practice. So it is critical that students are there. Dr. Harold will be communicating additional information regarding this practice to the children. So social distancing and safety measures that have to be in place. And I know they're not popular, but they're necessary. And again, leading into today, there's guidance that we're getting constantly. 131 page report that just came out today on, on guidance. CDC considerations for events and gatherings. Um, there's this constant guidance and, and requirements. News that other organizations are being shut down for their, them trying to pull off outdoor events. So it is absolutely critical that we do all the things possible within our control to make sure that we keep everyone safe. So the social distancing and safety measures, all participants will, so that means the students, the spectators, the faculty, um, anyone working the event from security will be required to complete and submit a waiver form, which I'll have attached um, in order to be granted access to the graduation ceremony. Mr. Tomaszewski is looking at uh, the, the ticketing system to make sure that we have specific and unique tickets. Um, the waiver form may be incorporated into the ticket or the ticket may be incorporated into the waiver form. Um, but essentially, um, the waiver form, it, it provides some information that, that you're disclosing whether you have or have not been um, diagnosed with COVID whether you've been in contact with anyone who's been diagnosed within the past couple of weeks, um, if you have a fever, if you have any symptoms, um, and then also th that you're signing off that you agree to comply with the measures that we're putting in, in, uh, in place. Those measures include adhering to social distancing, maintaining a space of six feet uh, between yourself um, and others that are not members of your household. So the seating arrangements in the stadium will be set up to allow for that space. Seating in the stadium, um, again, will be set up for allow for that space and we will have uh, staff members on, uh, on site to help direct and assist with enforcing those seating arrangements. Masks are required to be worn by all persons except those that are two years of age and under and anyone with a medical condition that would prevent the safe wearing of a mask, um, especially when physical distancing is not possible meaning when you're moving from your car to the stadium, if you're moving from the, you know, your seat to the restroom and back, when you're leaving the stadium, once you're seated, once you're between with you and your family member and there's six feet of dis distance between you and the next people, we know it's July. We know it's going to be warm. So we understand that there may be some leniences there, but you've got to work with us and make sure that during those times of, 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 of transition, of movement, that the masks are on. That's the only way to do this safely. Must, all participants must abide by the markings and the signage throughout the campus to ensure the social distancing. So we'll do our best to have markings, just like we see everywhere else. Markings on the ground, signage, posters with six feet distance. 
please work to adhere to those, the, the signage and that communication, the guidance that is there. There will be no bags of any type permitted inside the stadium larger than a wristlet. So to keep our workers safe, uh, normally we would do bag checks. We're not going to do bag checks because it's not, there's not a safe way to do it. So we're not having any bags. So we realize that for personal needs, the idea of a wristlet is not unreasonable. Uh, but no other bags, even with cameras and, and large uh, bags for camera equipment. Take the cameras out of the bag, leave the bag in the car, bring the camera in, but no bags will be permitted. If you show up at the door at the gate with a bag, you're going to need to return it to your car. And that's just going to delay you getting in or it may cause you to miss the beginning of the ceremony. Bottled water will be permitted. Of course, it, it, it's going to be warm. Uh, we, are, we will have bottle, bottled water available as well uh, for participants, for spectators. Water fountains will be shut off, but we'll make sure that we uh, stay hydrated with the summer heat. Restrooms will remain open. Uh, however, limited capacities will be in effect. So again, we're going to have the wa uh, waiver, the social distancing, masks, and we're going to do everything we can to keep everyone safe during the ceremony. But we are restricting spectators to two per graduating household. Um, and so uh, we're going to have to adhere to that. We're going to make sure that we provide for the distance, that we provide for the, uh, all of the guidelines that we can put into place. We're expecting a fantastic night. Uh, the length of the program will be a little bit shorter. We're going to limit the length of speeches. Uh, we're going to limit the number of speeches. Uh, but the idea there is to, to be in and out uh, within about 90 minutes or so. The real highlight and the focus is, is for, should be on the children. And so that's what we're, that's what we're going to strive for. That's what our focus will be. And that's what our goal will continue uh, to be. So again, there will be inconveniences. More information will be pushed out during uh, practice. Again, for with tickets, with parking passes, um, with the waiver form. So please make sure that the students are available July 1st at 8 a.m. To, uh, to come to practice, to get the information and be on the lookout from the high school for uh, that additional, those additional things. So thank you. I apologize for the, the, the lateness of, of the, uh, the stream. I will have all this information posted in written form uh, tomorrow morning. So please look for it on the website. I will send it out via Skyward so it'll come up in your email as well. So we wanna get all this out to you as clear and, and, and as succinct as possible. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Hope you have a wonderful evening, and I look forward to July 1st. Thank you.